We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop now is Hastings, Nebraska, as we get to visit with Coach Matt Franzen from the Hastings Broncos. Coach, third season with the program. Last season, a very good record, uh, seven and four, most wins for more than a decade for the Broncos in football. It uh, looks like that you're finding your place there as well. It feels like it. Um, you know, when I when I came on board two and a half years ago, it, we we knew it was going to be a rebuilding situation and a, a kind of a once proud program that had fallen a little bit. And the first year was uh, was was a struggle. Uh, I have having coached a lot of years. I still learned a lot that first year uh, and um, worked through it. And and over the last two years, like you said, things have really started to feel more more like home. We've um, we inherited some really good people, really good players, and then we've recruited now three classes uh, of, of, of recruits that I've been involved in. And and so it's it started to become more the, the team that I guess we envisioned or hoped for when, when, I, when I came on board. I hope you've recruited some quarterbacks because I think that you're going to be looking at someone new taking that spot for 2023. So we, we have five uh, freshmen that came in, five freshman quarterbacks, and we have one one returner from last year. And, and he uh, he didn't play – much quarterback last year is kind of a jack of all trades on special teams for us as a tremendous athlete, but he's, uh, he's the front runner going into the season. Now Eli Nappy is his name. He's a, a junior for us. And, um, and, and he's got a lot of competition from one, specifically one of the incoming freshmen, Carson Kudlachik from St. Cecilia high school right here in town. Um, so those two have been battling it out and, and they may end up both playing at the beginning of the season, but it, it's, it's been good. It's been good for each other. It's been really good competition. Let me ask that really quickly because competition in camp, and I, and I know that the it's we're in the month of August now, so that's when things really get going. How big is that, especially for a spot that that could be open? It's 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 essential if if you want to really maximize the talent or the potential that you have, you have to have the somebody to compete and push and push each other. And uh, I think last season there were times where we had a seven and four season, which for us we were we were really really happy with because it had been quite a while since Hastings had had that many wins in a season. But at the same time, it felt like we didn't, we didn't maximize maybe what we could have been and what we could have done because there are spots where we just didn't have competition. And we saw it more so in spring football this last year that some of our best players didn't have anybody to push them. And Eli, for instance, at quarterback, he was the only quarterback we had going through spring football. So he could have a bad day and he was going to come out and be the number one quarterback the next day, regardless of what happened. And I think with Eli, especially the competition has elevated him and forced him to elevate his play. And we feel a lot better about where we are there than we did last spring. So, so like I said, competition is essential, no matter who you are or what position it is, it's always good to have somebody that, you know, that you have to continue to compete and do things right. And you can't miss a practice or somebody else might step in and take your job. That's right. Coach, last season, Brett Simonson led the team in carries. He led the team in receptions as well and, and was uh, a big part of the offense. Talk about him coming into 23. So he he chose, fortunately for us, he chose to come back and take advantage of that, of that extra COVID year. We didn't have many that chose to do that, but he was one of two. And um, he's, I mean, not, knock on wood, he had a he had a tremendous spring football and even an even better summer. I mean, he's he has put in the work to make his final season count. Uh, team leader, I'd, I'd be surprised if he doesn't get voted as one of our team captains here at the end of camp. Um, just hard worker. He he leads by example, but he's also the type of guy who has really becomes very comfortable in his own role in his own skin, and he's become a vocal leader for us too. And and those are the guys as as, as a coach in. In, in this day and age, uh, a lot of guys want to lead by example, and there aren't a lot of guys that are comfortable stepping up and speaking and, and, and being critical um, when, when, they, when players need to hear that. And, and it can't just be the coaches that are, that are critiquing players. When it comes from other players, it's so much more impactful, and Brett has, has become that guy for us. So really excited to see what the season has in store for him. And, and I think he had a good season last year, ended up second-team all-conference for us, and we're excited that he can do that and more this season for us. Jay Sean Wright, one of the receivers coming back for you. And I, offense, I know that you want to continue to build on. Talk about him and who, uh, who also might be out there catching some passes. Yeah, so so Jay Sean had a had a, a a good season last year for us. Um, 
especially early in the season and people figured out who he was and, and later in the season wasn't wasn't quite as explosive as he was early but he stuck around here in town this summer and kind of like brett he put in a lot of work this summer and really improved his, his ball cutting skills so he's one of the fastest players in the league he's not he's not big um but but he nobody's going to catch him if he gets the ball in the open field and like i said i think this summer he's really really improved on this, his ability to catch the ball and, and he'll be running a lot of streaks down the middle of the field between the safeties and so we want to throw the ball to him but again in traffic you have to have a guy who's willing to to go in and catch the ball and and in track and in traffic and anyway we're excited about that i think he'll, he'll be a junior for us this year uh but i think he's poised to to make some more noise for us um ethan wilburn is, is probably the other receiver that i would mention and Ethan came in last year. He actually transferred from our offensive coordinator's former school, Southern Oregon, where Coach Fosnott came from, and um, and played for us last year and started most of the season and had had a decent season. And um, and he had he had uh, a medical procedure done um, in the off season and cleaned some things up. And he looks like a he kind of looks like a new player. He's 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 faster than he was last year and. And he's the outside receiver for us that can really get out and go. And so we're we're three four days into camp. It's 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 still early, but um, but he's been a tough cover for uh, for our defense so far. And and hopefully he can complement Jay Sean on the inside by giving us that outside threat because you need to you need to have more than one. Otherwise, they can easily take that one away. Coach, when we talk about the offensive line and and uh, whether they're veterans or whether they're they're newcomers coming in. You know, there's going to be someone different at quarterback. Is that um, is that a challenge during camp when when it's going to be someone new in both those spots or or in in the quarterback spot to get those linemen ready for the season? Talk about your offensive line. Yeah, well, we, so we graduated three starters uh, last season, and um, one one player played about half the season last year. Didn't start, but came off the bench in some injury situation and played a lot. So we, we have three guys that are returning that, that really have a lot of starting experience and they're in the interior. It's our both guards and, and our center, uh, our left guard, Oliver Cushman is his name and he'll be a senior for us and has, re has really turned himself into, into a, a very good player. He's always been a big kid, but he's, he's, he's finally figured some things out on how to use his size and his length. Um, we'll have, we'll have a couple new starters at the tackle spots. Um, one player was going to, was poised to start last year and then had an injury in camp and missed the season. And he's back. Josh Hendrickson is his name, um, from Tucson. And hopefully he'll be able to, to hold up and, 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 uh, hold one of those positions. And, and, and then, uh, you know, the other tackle spot, we have some competition going right now. There, there are some young offensive linemen. We have a few freshmen in this class that that uh, is one of the better incoming classes that i think i've been a part of uh and there may be a couple of those guys that are in the mix as well once they learn a little bit more of the playbook but um i think but i think we'll be fine we'll, again we've graduated some starters in the offensive line but i think from an ability standpoint i i really don't think we're going to miss a beat once we get these guys playing together and get them all on the same page we're speaking now with coach matt franson from hastings who's in his third season with the program here on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here. We like talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, we head to the defensive side of the ball, and, and I want to look back just a little bit because uh, watching you all last year, you know, seeing the, the results from the games and, and different things along those lines, one of the things that stood out to me was the defensive play. And if you look at some of the numbers from last season, I think they're skewed because of a couple of losses. I mean, there, there was a tough loss to Morningside, tough loss to you know Northwestern. Uh, it's, well, it's a G-Pack, so it's, it's going to be a tough league any way around. But numbers aside, the defense did a good job for you all last year and really, uh, I think, made statements on their own. And I think that the league had to recognize when they played the Broncos, they were going to be playing a tough defense. Talk about the defense, and let's start with the line, uh, Lathan Shaw coming back. Yeah, in our, our last year we switched over to a three-four defense. Um, you know, I, this is my third year. Our defensive coordinator Kyle Suttles. This is this will also be his third year, and so he came in really late, joined us really late. Uh, about I mean, it was weeks, a couple of weeks before the the twenty twenty one season started, and 
ran a scheme that year that he and I weren't particularly comfortable with, but it was so late in the process, we didn't want to make a switch. So going into last season, we did fully switch to the 3-4 defense, and it, I think it complements the players. And I mean, something that the D coordinator believes in, which which is important. And uh, and last year we had a, a new, a lot of the same players, but it was just a new looking defense. And and you're right, it, for it, for most of those games, our defense played fantastic football and forced takeaways, and really really was hard to, to run against. So Lathan is our nose guard. He'll be a, a senior. He was a first team All Conference player for us last year, and and didn't have a a, a, a huge stat line. As a nose guard, you don't make a lot of tackles. Your linebackers do if you're doing a good job, um, but he really makes the middle of our defense go. And 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 like I said, he's he'll be back for us for this year. And just a special player and a, and a neat young man, and and um, and loves the game. We're happy to have him. There were linebackers making tackles for you last season. Then Caden Egger was among those, uh, led the team in tackles, and and Mason uh, Catterson as well, making uh, making some tackles for you. Yep, and and Caden what did he got some conference honors last year, honorable mention, and he'll be back. He'll be a junior uh, for us this year. He's one of our outside linebackers, and in our in the three four defense, you have to have speed and and physicality on the edges, uh, really, to make that defense go. And and he is one of those guys, and so solid player. He started at the end of his freshman year for us two years ago, earned a starting position, and then held it down all year last year, and and continued to improve. And now by his junior year. As a third-year starter, he's comfortable and has a and has a role as our strong side outside linebacker. And so um, Mason actually opted not to not to return this year, but we have a couple inside linebackers that we do feel really good about. Uh, Jaden Roberts is one of those two. He'll be a sophomore this year. Actually, led the team in sacks last year uh, as a freshman, and he only played about twenty percent of our defensive snaps. So he has a knack for rushing the quarterback. He's not very big, but he's hard to find and he's hard to block. And Coach Suttles put him in in those spots where he could really maximize his his talent a year ago. And now he'll be a sophomore and 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 knows the defense. And and Fareed Shayuade is our other inside linebacker who will be a senior. And th- those two really, really run well. We're, we're going to have some really nice speed in the middle of the defense uh, with those guys. So we're excited about that. Coach, you made a point of saying you, you wanted a scheme that your coordinator's comfortable with, and and obviously that that would be the way it was. Uh, that begs the question then: if you're running that three four, does that affect the way you recruit? I mean, are you recruiting then specifically for that scheme? Yeah, well, you know, I'd say yes and no. At, at the end of the day, we're never going to turn down a, a young man who can play football, <laughs> and. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and in that three, four defense, I guess the one thing I would say where maybe it does affect our recruiting is, as you mentioned with Caden, um, Egger, that, that outside linebacker, that strong side outside linebacker position in the three, four defense is, is probably the, needs to be probably the best player on the field. I mean, the defensive line and with Lathan at nose guard for us, I can't argue against him, but. Um, but that's the guy that's in space and he needs to be an athlete. He needs to be physical and he needs to be the feature guy. So as we go recruiting, when, when we recruit, we are looking for that player specifically and then to build around that. So, so to a gr- degree, I suppose, uh, you know, defensive linemen, you, you always need good defensive linemen, but you know, the, the big, the big four, three middle uh, isn't something that we necessarily recruit. We need speed at the defensive ends, and we need a uh, we do need a, a, a nose guard with some with some heft to him. But but it is a little bit of a different style defense, built more probably about around speed than just sheer size. I know you're going to have some new players in the secondary. Can you take us through that and and what you may know right now? Well, so last year our secondary was was one of the strengths of our team, and we we had we had three senior starters and then our our fifth man in the secondary off the bench was also a senior so four out of our five secondary players were seniors uh, all graduated and so we have one coming back Blake Vaughn is one of our safeties he'll be a, a junior this year and he had a good season last year but he's surrounded now by 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 all new players and so as we go through camp that's the spot other than the quarterback position where we truly are um are wide open and, and evaluating players and putting players in positions to see if we can test some of our younger corners against some of our better receivers when, I mean, it's different when you're working against a second and third team wide receiver. And then all of a sudden you line up against 
against that first teamer. And if you can cover him, you prove yourself. And, and so we are in that position right now where we're, where we're putting some guys in some positions where they can be tested. But um, Eli Husenfeld is a junior for us. He's from right down the road here, in, uh, Superior, Nebraska. And, um, and he'll, he'll have a definite shot at one of the corners. Um, there, there's a couple of other guys. Jalen McCall is a sophomore for us from Arizona and, and he's he's a solid player, doesn't have any varsity experience yet. Kellen Robertus from Las Vegas is another corner for us who is he's a sophomore, but uh, he he had an in- injury as well last year that he missed the season. So didn't get a chance to play him at all last year in any situations, but he is back. He's full speed and shaking off a little bit of rust, getting back into football, but he's a guy who's going to have an opportunity as well. Mike Rutherford is another is another corner who was a quarterback as of two years ago and then moved over to secondary last year. Now he's a senior, so this is his time to have a shot too. So several several names um, there that, that may, you know, somebody's going to win those two corner spots. And then the other safety, most likely young man named Marcus Dustin, and he's from Lincoln Pius. He's a sophomore this year. Last year as a freshman, he was a standout on special teams for us. Played a little bit at safety, and now he's got an opportunity to step in and play. So he's going to he's going to be a nice player for us. Um, he'll need to, he'll need to learn it a little bit under fire as he gets into some varsity games here very soon. Coach, you go on the road first to get things started. First couple of weeks, a one and out of conference game, and there in week zero, August twenty sixth at Peru State, and then September 2nd at Dakota State before you come back home. First opportunity for the folks at home to get to see you for 2023, and you'll do so hosting Morningside on September 9th. Talk about the opening to your schedule. Yeah, it, it's so we, we had a, a two-year deal with a school called Trinity International out of Chicago, and we went we went there last year and played, and, and then this was the second year of that contract, contract and the school – dropped they dropped sports they didn't actually close they went full fully virtual but they dropped all of their on-campus programming so so no sports um and we had to go very quickly looking for a non-conference game if we wanted one and peru state was still open uh peru state's coach was is an alum here of hastings college and and we know we know him well so we're going to go to peru state for the home opener on the 26th uh, under the lights there at the oak bowl and then up to to south dakota to play dakota westland and then, like you said, the home opener the next week here against Morningside. So um, I, I like it. I'd rather play two out of the three at home rather than two out of the three on the road. But um, but you have to you got to play them all. And with the conference, you have to play everybody once at some point. So um, so so I like it. And then as the season plays out, um, it's um, I mean I think you know you have a, a couple of obvious powerhouses in the conference, but they're balanced within our schedule. So. Um, you know, we, again, we'll have to play everybody once, but I think the schedule fits up, um, hopefully, hopefully pretty well for us. Well, the Broncos are a team that look to be trending upward coach, and, and uh, I appreciate your leadership there and you're looking for, for year three. So that's what we're going to, to see happen in less than three weeks. Things will get underway there at Peru state coach, Matt Franson. Thank you so much for breaking down the team and, and, uh, just taking time with us today here on the summit here on Midwest sports net. We'll follow the Broncos this season. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you, Joey.